Whew, all right. Today is a big pressing day. And my wrists, elbows, forearms, everything is tight. Shoulders, tired. I've been doing a lot of kickboxing lately. Here's a clip. Oh, yeah. You've been following enough to know that, right? Huh? You've been following enough to know what I'm talking about. So, I need to get nice and lubed up. All right, guys, what is up? We are doing a voiceover. I wanted to talk to you about something that I think is super prominent in the POTS community. I was live today and we were talking about, let me see, we were talking about, do you need to know the origin of your POTS syndrome? Is it useful information? And my point of contention with this is, point of contention, or my way of thinking with this specifically is, no, you don't need to know what your um, what the origin of your POTS was or is for a few reasons. Um, I don't think that it's completely useful to know where you got POTS from because it seems to be that regardless of how you got it, viral or stress, some sort of traumatic, you know, traumatic event, whatever, it seems that when you're talking specifically about POTS syndrome, that the treatment is the same no matter what. Now, there's gonna be so many people that are gonna say, no, if you have a traumatic brain injury or if you have POTS because you have a virus or blah, blah, blah. You guys, I'm talking just about diagnosed with POTS, no other comorbidities, no other problems health-wise. We did two more sets. It went okay. I'm, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I've been training a lot lately. I've been doing Muay Thai again, kickboxing, yeah, kickboxing, not necessarily Muay Thai. I've um, been doing it once a week, but I bought a heavy bag. I don't know if you guys can see it. And so I trained twice last week. That So my shoulders are smoked. They're freaking rocked. Now we have to do bench press and overhead press in a superset. Man, this is feeling good. Um, we hit 1,000 subscribers. For any of you guys that don't know, I don't know. I'm putting an over, a, a voiceover on this for sure today. We hit 1,000 subscribers, dude. I'm so pumped. Thank you all for being a part of this journey and for subscribing to the channel and uh, all your support. It really does mean a lot. We're coming out with merch soon. Potsy merch. Like the video and comment if you're excited for Pots merch. Cool Pots merch though. Nothing that looks stupid. It's gonna be like streetwear almost. Okay, here we go. Six reps paused here. It's light, it's 165. My pec, my shoulders. You guys, I, this week is a deload for working out basically, or at least today is. And um, I'm really happy about that. Sometimes you're just worn down, you need to chill. It's what I tell people with POTS. When you realize that some things are going, you're feeling more fatigued than normal, feeling more tired. Yeah, there's a point that you push through. So like right now, I'm still moving, I'm still doing exercise, but I'm taking it a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to let my body recover. Although I know that I still need to do something to continue the stimulus that I'm looking for and to stay stay uh, stay in shape for lack of better terms. So we're moving, we're doing some stuff. <clears throat> Same thing with pots. Make sure that you move, make sure that you're doing something. That could even just be getting your steps in. No serious health problems that could have point, that could give you pots like symptoms. I think what what is so interesting here is that, and the reason why I wanna talk about health anxiety is that people that have pots tend to have a lot of health anxiety. And I think it's helpful for me to tell you guys my experience with health anxiety um, to kind of relate to you guys. I've said a hundred thousand times before that I don't want to be relatable. I want to be the guy that you guys look up to. I want to be the person that can that you guys could draw some sort of inspiration from. But on the other token, what I'm starting to notice is that like, that's all fine and dandy. And I can sit here and I can talk shit and I can be like, uh, you pussy, get up and you know, get to work. But if you guys don't believe the message because you don't know my history or you don't know my past, I don't think it's gonna go very far. So let me give you guys some insight onto me. Um, when I got diagnosed with POTS, I was in and out of the hospital about 14 times that year that I got diagnosed with POTS, and this was before diagnosis. After getting diagnosed with POTS for a good like six months, I probably went to the hospital another five to 10 times. So in total, in about a year span, I was in the hospital like, I don't know, 15, 20 times, whatever it was, how, like, you know, I, 20, or 25 times, something, I do the math, I don't know. 
I was in the hospital a lot and it came to a point where I had to make a decision of Am I going to let the fear of or the anxiety of something else kill me mentally, or am I going to do something about it, right? Because so often, so many of you guys, and so did I, will go searching for the health problem. We'll go to a new doctor, we'll find a new specialist, we'll want a referral to a specialist. All these different things that really, to be honest with you, when you, after you get the diagnosis of POTS and everything else is all, everything else has already been, um, has already been cleared. Like you don't have heart issues. You don't have this. You don't have that. So many of us can get paralysis by analysis where it's like, you're looking for the reason instead of ever doing anything proactive. So now one of, and, and, and the reason why that's such an issue is because time will go on more time will go on. The world keeps spinning. The world keeps turning and you never do anything about it and you don't get any better. You only get worse, right? You regress instead of progress. And that's a huge problem. And I talk to so many people on a day-to-day -day basis with pots that have actionable steps that they could take, especially people who are a little bit more functioning than others. And they just never take them because they're waiting for their next doctor's appointment. And that is so detrimental to your progress as somebody with pots. Now, the other side of this coin that somebody brought up, and I think it's actually pretty useful, is he brought up the example of the COVID vaccine and COVID, and maybe the COVID vaccine um, being responsible for people getting POTS in the first place. Okay, and so now his argument is that, um, that maybe people should know about that type of stuff because it could prevent other people from getting POTS. I 100% agree. Take away the COVID vaccine as the example, because I know a lot of people are gonna get triggered politically or whatever. Take away that specific example and replace it with almost anything that you have the knowledge of, you know, um, side effects happening and pods being one of them. Take away that example and replace it with anything. And now think about how you could, how you could be like prophylactic of it. Like, like, like you could avoid it on purpose so that you don't possibly get pots. However, my argument to that though, too, is, um, in life with anything, right with anything in life, you're running risks and you need to weigh the pros and the cons. And so stress is an example that I like to use because a lot of times for people with pots, what tends to happen is that they have a very traumatic event in life, whether that's like real trauma, um, <laughs> that might not be the real, the, the terminology that people want to hear, whether it's like something really traumatic happened in life, like somebody dying or like, um, a dog dying or something like that. Or if it's like, you just had a lot of stress for a really long time, all usually something of that nature happens. And my argument here is that like, you just can't walk through life trying to avoid everything stressful, right? So you, you just need to be proactive. If you end up getting sick and you end up falling sick with pots and you end up getting the diagnosis, you need to be proactive instead of reactive. So stop looking for what the root cause could have been via timelines and things of that nature, because in the long run, the treatment is going to be the same. Now, if you have a lingering type of virus or you have, you know, a micronutrient deficiency or you're malnourished and all these things, obviously there's steps that you can take to fix those issues. But then it becomes an issue of, did you actually have POTS or did you have pot like symptoms because of these other issues? So anyway, um, getting rid of health anxiety, how can we do this now? In my opinion, getting rid of health anxiety is a little bit, it, it's, 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 um, it's interesting because <sighs> I was just about to stop this video and then re-record one. Um, it's interesting because to me, I would handle it a little bit different than other people would. Right. I told you guys that I was in a hospital, blah, 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 blah. Right. Long story long. I ended up telling myself one day, um, I was about to go to the hospital again and I ended up telling myself enough is enough, right? I was with my, you know, I was, I wasn't with Heather yet, but I was with somebody else and I was like, enough is enough. I am just, if, if something really is wrong, I'm going to just let it happen. I'm going to let myself have a medical emergency and be taken to the hospital via ambulance. And lo and behold, I was totally fine. The issue is, is that so many people with POTS, every time they feel something, they think it's new or they think this time it's going to destroy them. This time is going to be the time and it's usually not. So how do you get rid of health anxiety? For the most part, in my opinion, how you get rid of health anxiety is facing health anxiety. When you are faced with the fear or the want 
you know, the fear of a medical emergency or the want to call the doctor or go to the hospital or get a referral to a new physician or a new um, specialist or whatever, when you already have a diagnosis and you already know what's going on, don't do it. Don't give in. That's truly my best advice. You guys, I hope that you did like this video. If you did hit that like button, subscribe. If you are new, we are over a thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much. We're coming out with merge soon. Hit that link in description. If you want to join a positive pots forum, welcome yourself to the community. There's so many, you know, there's so many resources in there. How to, how to increase heat tolerance, how to hydrate properly, supplement recommendations. There's a workout program in there for you. Plus a bunch of, a bunch of positive pots people that only want to see you do well. We'll see you in there until next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Goodbye.